Hello YouTubers, so back to Angular. This is like my second video uh, uh, talking about AngularJS. I am learning along the way and the things that I learn I'd like to um, share with people as a, a, a part of the uh, learning process is to actually give to people and give back to people what you learn. Uh, that's probably allows you to consume over 70% of the materials that you're learning. So I'm gonna go ahead here and talk about something that I was uh, digging into um, before I start this video. So what's happening is, uh, back to our application in here, uh, originally we had, I'm gonna remove this because that, that was uh, from when I was trying and training uh, before making this video. So what we had before on Angular is uh, this structure. What we had is, a controller that we call a scratch controller that passes a bunch of values as a string to a global universal namespace that we call a scope and um, that's hard-coded name so you can't um, you can't change that um, and not that I know of yet and uh, I, I try to run ng repeat to enlist all these items in that list that I pulled from um, in, in, in a, an, unordered, an unordered list. So when we ran that application, what we got is this guy, right? So that's cool. Now I want to do something a little bit uh, um, out, out of the box, you know, f f from a... So you're, you're writing applications um, uh, within your JavaScript scope, but you're still not talking to the backend world. The backend world, you got C Sharp, uh, Java, whatever developers in the back end writing uh, huge, huge uh, microservices or services in general. And you want to you wanna consume these services and represent that these services however you want on your uh, front end, on your client side. Uh, these services now with the big direction now, specifically with microservices, that services are as dumb and as simple as possible so they just give you a bunch of data and you decide what you want to do with these data how you want to represent it how you want to show it uh, how you want it to look like how you want it you want it to be listed it's it's completely your call so today I want to learn how um, how to talk to these microservices or a given endpoint um, I'm gonna teach you guys uh, what I learned um, um, a few days ago about this piece. So what's happening here is that as we pass the scope as a universal um, uh, variable that we use to attach whatever properties to it, we're gonna gonna get back get back to that because we're gonna use that to show our data on the front end. Uh, what's happening is is that we're gonna use another guy that's that's the HTTP, and by definition HTTP basically is doing uh, HTTP requests like risk default services it's doing a git it's doing a put it's doing a post uh, it's doing all kinds of uh, and delete it's doing all kinds of crud uh, operations that you want to do when you talk to a given microservice so now that we have the HTTP we want to talk to a given um, a microservice to give us uh, some data that we can show on our website or our app. So I'm gonna use that HTTP variable. And of course, if you see here from the IntelliSense as we talk, it got all the um, um, uh, uh, CRUD operation, RISTful operations that you may need to uh, execute a bunch of commands to a given microservice so what I'm gonna use here today is git and now it's asking me for the uh, URL for the endpoint that I want to test if you go online if you don't have a microservice if you, you, you could go back to my videos about building whip API's and see how to build a, a quick and dirty whip API and, and consume it but um, because the focus and the main purpose of this video is to actually get you to see what angular does I'm not gonna waste time uh, building another microservice. Instead, there are websites, cool websites uh, online like httpbin.org, and it gives you endpoints that you could call and test your microservices with it. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of these endpoints, which is the IP. What it does is that it returns back to you the IP address of your computer. 
since I don't, since I have a, a dynamic IP address, I really don't care uh, about exposing my IP address through this video. But um, what we're focusing on here is that we want the URL that we want to send a request to and get that data. And what you actually get is is basically a JSON object that has one property that's called origin and it contains the IP address of the person. So what's gonna have, this This could come really, really handy and I'll, like just this one service could come really, really handy and I'll, I'll get to that when we talk about some innovative uh, ideas that could be used um, on a global scale. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna take this um, endpoint or address and I'm just gonna stick it down here. All right, so we made the get request we went out there and we got our JSON object. How do we uh, uh, consolidate this JSON object into a fully formed object that we can use and push out and modify and do whatever we want with it? There are a bunch of events that come out of every call that uh, the HTTP variable does. So from that perspective, Git has this call, this uh, event, which is success. There's, of course, uh, uh, other uh, events that we will come to, like for instance, error. If things didn't go well, what do you want to show your user? Do you want the whole application just to fall apart? Or do you want to let the user know that something wrong have occurred, especially if they're using a mobile app or whatnot? So I'm just going to go with success here. And with success, I want to capture that object. So I'm going to build a function here that has the, a data uh, input parameter. And this data input parameter is basically your JSON object that you're getting from that endpoint. So the JSON object that came from here is basically this guy. So now we get to decide what we want to do with this uh, JSON object. So I'm going to go ahead and call the scope and add a dynamic property. I'm going to call it whatever I want. So I'm just going to call it origin. And I called it origin obviously because the, the object, the data object that's coming from the outside world uh, contains only one property that's origin and that's all I care about really. So I'm going to go ahead here and say from that data object, give me origin. And of course the Intel sense won't help you a lot here. You're getting this because there is no way like IntelliSense is not as advanced today to actually go out there and see if there is an object and what kind of properties. We're not there yet. It, IntelliSense is not that advanced yet. And there's a lot of problems that may surround uh, building a feature like this, but it's definitely a good idea. Uh, all right, so data.origin, and we want now to consume that origin object, the property that we got, just as we consume the names before. Instead, that the only difference is that we're making an actual call in here to get our stuff. So back here on the index, let's build another HTML, uh, let's say span tag, and it has to be within the Scratch app, within the Scratch controller, because this is where all things are uh, folded. And I'm going to go ahead and do those double brackets, opening and closing uh, parens, and I'm going to put in origin. So in fact, what this is really is scope.origin, but I'm just using the origin because that's how it works in Angular, or how it was programmed. So you would expect now that when I run my app, let me, let me put some decoration around it. So around that space, it will say your IP uh, address is some people might freak out to see something like that but I, I, I don't see why um, so now you have the IP address now you're what your code is doing is going back there talking to scratch app the scratch controller and pulling in this object and putting it in a property and this property is basically displayed right here so let's run this guy and see what happens Lo and behold, your IP address is blah, blah. So that's basically what it is. It's really, um, it's, it's really what it does. And uh, so what, what happened now, if, from a debugging perspective, if you look at the 
developer tools in here. Let me pull these on the side so we can, and we look at the network calls. If I clear everything in here and I refresh my app, it made a call right here. It's making a call to IP and it received an object back. And these are the headers. It called this endpoint and this is the IP of the remote address. 200 OK is a sign that yes, you have received an object and and here's here's the object. So that's pretty much it. Next time I'm going to talk about, you know, how can we communicate more effectively? So we want to do something like a search engine. We want to send stuff, execute it on the server, pull back the data and then enlist it. On the controller so that combines what we had in the previous session and this session thank you so much for watching keep learning thank you